in this part we are going to describe the anterior prevertebral muscles the anterior prevertebral muscles are the group of muscles which lie in front of the cervical vertebrae in the neck <sighs> That is a cadaveric specimen showing some of these muscles, the longus capitis muscle, the levator scapula, the scalus medius here, the two parts of the scalus anterior are shown after we cut part of it to show the brachial plexus deep to it and the subclavian artery will be the one going this way this is the common carotid this is subclavian on the other side that is the scalus anterior here with the subclavian artery passing deep to it as you said this is subclavian vein separated from the artery by the uh, scalus anterior muscle This is the left common carotid artery. This area will be seen enlarged when we come to the scalus anterior with the details of the anterior relation of the scalus anterior. But what we can see here, <coughs> the longest coli can be seen here, the superior oblique, the inferior oblique, and the straight one. And this is the anterior lateral ligament here, the esophagus is here, the trachea is here, that is the left innominate, right innominate, that is the left internal jugular vein and left subclavian. As I said, we will come to the details of this. This is the thoracic duct. So we have the longest coli muscle, and this muscle lies anterior to the vertebral column from the second cervical to the third thoracic vertebrae. As we said, it has a superior oblique part, inferior oblique part, and vertical part in the middle. The two obliques, for the inferior, it comes from the bodies of the thoracic vertebrae to the anterior tubercles of the transverse processes. While the superior one will be the opposite. It will come from the anterior tubercles of the transverse processes to go to the anterior arch of the atlas. We know that the atlas has no body. While the vertical part will come from the bodies of the upper three thoracic vertebrae, to the lower cervical vertebrae, the bodies of the lower cervical vertebrae. So, the inferior part will be coming from the upper three thoracic vertebrae, the bodies, to be inserted in the transverse processes and tubercles of the fifth and the sixth, while the superior oblique from the third, fourth, and fifth transverse process anterior tubercles to the atlas. These are the three parts of the longus coli. That is the muscle here. That is the inferior part. That is the vertical part. And the superior oblique part. That is the longus capitis muscle and the two recti, rectus capitis lateralis and anterior. And this, the three scalene muscles, the anterior, the medius, and the posterior. These are the group of muscles which you call them anterior 
brevertebral muscles. The longest cabbage which you have seen arise from the anterior tubercles of the transverse process of the third to the sixth cervical to be inserted to the basilar part of the occipital bone. The term cabitis means it will come to be inserted or attach it to the skull. That's why it's called cabitis. The rectus cabitis anterior from the lateral mass of the atlas and its transverse process to the basilar part of the occipital bone. The lateralis from the transverse process of the atlas to the occipital bone. So these are the three muscles. Now the scalene muscles. The scalene muscles, the three of them. The anterior, the medius, and the posterior. That is the anterior here. That is the medius, and both of them will be inserted into the upper surface of the first strip with a groove in between the, them for the artery here and in front of the scalus anterior for the vein over here. The scalus anterior will arise from the anterior tubercles of cervical 3 to 6 transverse processes. The medius will be coming from all transverse process of the cervical vertebrae except the first and the last and this in front of the posterior tubercles while the posterior will be in the posterior tubercles. So the anterior in the anterior tubercles, the posterior in the posterior tubercles and the medius in between anterior to the posterior tubercles. As I said, the anterior and the medius to the first step upper surface, the posterior to the upper surface of the second rib. They are supplied by branches from the roots of all those muscles are supplied by branches from the roots of the cervical plexus. One of the important muscles in the neck is the scalus anterior muscle. We have to know the relations of this muscle, especially its relation, the structures which are deep to it, namely the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery. This scalus anterior muscle here have anteriorly, as we can list here, the clavicle, the subclavius muscle, the sternocleidomastoid and the omohyoid. The lateral part of the carotid cheese will be anterior to it. The transverse cervical, the suprascapular and the ascending cervical arteries, the subclavian vein and the phrenic. We can see some of them here can see the suprascapular, the transverse cervical, the phrenic crossing from lateral to medial here. This is the thyrocervical trunk over here. But what we are concerned now is the subclavian vein and the lateral part of the carotid cheese which contains the common carotid and the internal jugular vein with the phrenic with the vagus nerve on this side here. We'll come to see it. Deep will be the pleura and the suprapleura membrane, the roots of brachial plexus as we said, the second part subclavian and the last two lies separate it from the scalus medius. Below will be the vertebral artery, medial to it, 
will be the vertebral artery, the inferior thyroid, the sympathetic trunk, and the thoracic duct on the left side. These are the main relations of the muscle. But the important thing is that, as we said, deep to it will be the brachial plexus, the roots of the brachial plexus, and the second part, subclavian. The subclavian artery will be passing with the roots, with the trunks of the brachial plexus on the upper surface of the first rib. Anterior to them will be the scalenus anterior, and posterior to them will be the first rib. That's what we call it the scalenus anterior syndrome. When calcification of that muscle will be pressing on the trunks of the brachial plexus and the second part of subclavian or the subclavian artery. And this will lead to changes, nervous changes and vascular changes in the corresponding upper limb. It is almost the same features of a cervical rib, which lies above the level of the first rib, with those structure between the two bones, the first rib and the cervical rib, making or resulting in the same compression of those two structures, the trunks of the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery. That's what we call it the scalenus anterior muscle syndrome. And this is the, the part or the, the structures which you can see here in relation to the muscle. That is the same figure, but we reflecting the left side of the root of the neck, the features there, where some details of the recurrent lineage nerve is here, that is the inferior thyroid, branch of the thyrocervical trunk, that is the vagus nerve, that is the left common carotid, and that is the left subclavian here. That is the phrenic nerve with the transverse cervical and the suprascapular. The termination of the thoracic duct at the junction between the internal jugular and the subclavian vein, the left nominate vein. These are some good that the the good feature of that cadaveric specimen, which we can see some details here, the esophagus, the trachea, the brachiocephalic, the right common carotid, and the right subclavian.